Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my channel. This is my husband, Pia, as you've probably seen in a few clips. Um, <laughs> he won't stop eating for this, but he's inadvertently in the video. What are we going to talk about today? Your channel. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about then being pregnant in the bush in October in the height of summer well it's not even really the height of summer it's before summer but it's pretty much the hottest month because it's the driest horriblest month and it's been about 32 degrees in the tent at night so it's been a bit miserable so I am six weeks pregnant now <coughs> six <coughs> weeks and a bit <laughs> so what let's see what what challenges have we faced being pregnant in the bush. Lizard poo. Liz oh, lizard poo is an important one because on most kind of things that you read or videos you watch on YouTube for what to do in early pregnancy or what not to do, what not to eat, all those things, um, one of the main things that always comes up is don't go near cats, don't um, change their litter because of tox toxomaplasmosis. Toxoma uh, am I saying that right? Toxomaplasmosis going to write it on the screen um, but what they don't often say because obviously it's not really that much of a challenge for most people is um, reptile poo um, and we have that everywhere everywhere there's like the skinks that live in my office on the windowsill and they poo on my desk all the time um, are you just gonna go play in my bag or are you coming to help me Poop on a bag. Poop on a bag. Poop on my bag. <laughs> this is under my book. Go back to your window. Have you been chased away by that other nasty one? Hmm? Lizard whisperer. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to like clean my, I've kind of got used to it for the last five years so don't really do anything about it, just kind of sweep it up every now and again which is a bit gross. Um, but now I'm having to clean it more. We have a lot of frogs and um, skinks and geckos um, like all around the place so you never know like where they've got their germs so it's making it quite challenging and we had a <laughs> gecko in the tent the other night which we wouldn't normally worry about but Theo decided that we should get it out so he got a Tupperware tub caught it jumped out put me on my stomach <laughs> so I was in the bathroom and I just heard a squeal which is me unlike Theo of squealing at some like animal running around but I didn't realize it had actually bit him on the stomach so he flung it off and it went onto our table and it kind of ran down and hid underneath the table and you could see his little heart beating like crazy because um, normally I wouldn't mind a gecko in the tent because it'll actually like eat spiders and bugs and stuff but yeah obviously now we're trying to be a little bit more careful um, I'm not brushing my teeth in our um, bathroom water sink anymore because the drums are kind of open there could be like lizard stuff in there even monkey poo, there could be monkey poo in there. At the moment we can't clean it because the um, like stand that the water tanks are on are kind of completely rotten with uh, the termites that eat the wood. So you can't really climb up there safely. So we're hoping to get a ladder soon and like get up in there and clean it out and sort it out so I can use that water. The moment I'm using water from the kitchen sink, I'm brushing my teeth into a bowl. We can't climb up the... We're gonna just have to turn the water off. What else? Heat-wise, my plan at the moment, which is working really well, is to fill a hot water bottle with uh, just normal water and putting it in our solar freezer. Luckily, um, after a couple of years, I 
back to being in the bush, we yeah. we got a solar freezer, which is awesome. One of my favorite ways to stay cool in the bush, especially at night time, because it's so much hotter in a tent at night. You don't really get much air inside because uh, there are all the bugs that come in. But I have two hot or well cold water bottles, and I fill them with water. And I freeze them, so I've got actually a big one and a little one. Um, and they're really nice to just put under your neck or like on your back when you're trying to sleep and stay nice and cool. Um, yeah, this <laughs> have some odd things in our freezer. This is dung, elephant dung samples for a study that I'm currently doing. So that worked really well. I've also got like a spray bottle which I fill with water and it's really nice to also spray on me at night. I'm having a shower later than I might normally do, washing my hair more and keeping it wet so it just kind of cools me down a little bit more. Um, I'm definitely more irritable and more hot than, I, hot than I've been for the past. For the past, like we've had five, five Octobers, so five really hot periods in the bush but this one I'm definitely like by lunchtime and in the afternoon I'm just yeah annoyed and hot and I can't concentrate on my work um, so I'm actually trying to do work earlier on when it's cooler so I've been working since 4 30 this morning um, it was really nice and crisp this morning actually so um, I got up a bit earlier and disturbed the air and started to do some work um, so it means like now I can finish a little bit earlier. What else? What other tactics? Oh, uh, my peppermint, my peppermint oil, which if you've followed me on Instagram, you uh, you would have seen my stories a while ago um, that I was putting the peppermint oil into the spray bottle and spraying it in our bathroom because it was supposed to discourage spiders and we were having tons of horrible baboon spiders. Um, I don't mind like a few of the spiders, but the baboon spiders I can't stand. So I was spraying that around and then Theo kind of burst my bubble because he saw a baboon spider drinking the peppermint water. So obviously not as much of a deterrent as I was hoping, but it's had a good side effect that if I'm feeling a bit like nauseous, if I smell that peppermint oil, it actually makes me feel a lot better. So that's useful. And obviously the spray bottle is helping to cool me down. So. Yeah, it wasn't a total bust. I've been taking all my vitamins. Bought them out from me, so <coughs> I don't think I've ever taken so many tablets. Look. Look at them all. Look. Um, oh, and also, I'll give a better view in a minute, but I've got my very own, like, snack box because Theo... He doesn't share with me. No, because everything I buy, Theo eats. Like if I buy biscuits, Theo will eat. Or like chocolate bars, I'll buy one for each of us or like a few for each of us. He'll finish his really quickly and then demand like half uh, of no mine. Demand. Yeah, you I do. ask. Oh, yeah. I, I ask. I'm going to demand. Mm -hmm. we'll demand. Well, he says that this means 50-50. You have to give me 50% of your chocolate bar. That's what his uh, rules are. So I bought lots of like healthy snacks, which I'm actually surprised that I could find in Lusaka. There was actually a lot more than I thought. Maybe I just hadn't really looked for healthy snacks before. Um, but I mean, I've got my future life, which I have anyway in mid morning as a smoothie. It's got like tons and tons of goodness in it. And it smells like those little strawberry cartoony hey, cupcakes. Tea, tea oh, what? Fruity roll. You're already get, trying to get in my snack box. Just one. You've got six. You got them for me. They're expensive. Okay. You can have one. <laughs> Thank you. Let's savour it. <clears throat> so I found savor like. Savour it. You don't savour these things, you eat them. I found like little packs of um, like nuts and very very protein balls and little fruit snacks, cereal bars, dried cranberries and not allowed any of those prunes because I heard at some point they could be helpful 
so I bought like a lot of stuff because we, we don't we never really know how long we're gonna be out in the bush it'll be at least three weeks um, I mean it's sometimes been six weeks before so um, I've got a few things just because I don't know what what we're gonna need at what stage um, lots of crackers some dark chocolate so I'm not being really unhealthy and just lots of different kind of snack mixes with nuts and various okay, they dried the, fruit and they things. get the picture okay lots of nice snacks and probably the biggest adjustment for me especially the first few days when I found out I was pregnant I actually probably felt a lot worse than I would have done normally just from going cold turkey on caffeine uh, so I gave up coffee straight away and I love coffee proper coffee in the bush um, so yeah gone to decaf and yeah as Theo says you get the picture so here is my snack box that Theo is not allowed in no entry for Theo you should um, that on there <laughs> yeah. No well, I say snack, it's got the decaf coffee there. So, yeah. It's really nice meeting you all. <laughs> oh, is this, are we wrapping up? I, I'm heading out. Okay. <laughs> if you like this uh, video, subscribe. Yeah, please subscribe. Want to get notifications? Push the button. <laughs> what button do they have to push? I don't know which, which side we're putting the button. Putting it. <laughs> Uh, I think it's the bell. This side, the bell. But there's and a bell. I, I push actually the think bell. it's down that side. I think Probably it might be side. here. Yeah. Push um, that, uh, bell yeah so do that because it will really help me out as well. Um, yeah. That's about it. We'll, we'll update it another time, and maybe I'll even get him involved again. No problem. Cheerio. This is the last time you've seen me. <laughs> I like know new people, meeting you for the first time. <laughs> Cheerio. Okay. Bye bye. So there's just a couple of other things that I wanted to show that I have brought specifically out to camp at this time. We've been here five years, so it probably would have been useful if we had this before. But malaria testing kits. Um, I haven't opened them yet as I don't want to kind of waste them. Um, but they were only, I think, 20 kwacha, which is... Um, think a bit more than two dollars maybe um, it's kind of great it's good gives a good peace of mind so if I can just test my blood if I'm feeling a bit under the weather um, malaria symptoms can be kind of can be anything really you know like headaches achy there's things that you might think were just a flu or cold or something um, so it's quite important to have that and you can't take anti-malarials in the first trimester, but you can um, take the chloratrum, I think it's called chloratrum. Uh, the medication is safe to take in the first trimester. So if I feel kind of dodgy at all, I'm gonna use this testing kit and then um, take them straight away. This is, oh, this, is, <laughs> this is not particularly for me being pregnant, but uh, Thea recently, got his snake uh, catching equipment and this is a special kind of snake bite bandage it's a smart bandage um, it's specifically used for I think it's black mambas um, yeah mambas and non-spitting cobras only so there's kind of a bit of a confusion about how you deal with different snake bites um, but these are the ones that you should really put a pressure bandage on I'm not entirely sure how this one works yet. I think it just, I think these guide you to the right pressure somehow, but um, Theo needs to unpack this and just kind of have a look. Oh, because I'm obviously being a lot more cautious with mosquitoes than I definitely normally would, um, I've kind of picked a few different bug sprays that I can kind of use on my face and stuff because obviously I don't want to kind of spray my face. Um, this one, I didn't realize this is coconut, it's absolutely disgusting. And it's actually only half full and I don't know why I didn't notice when I picked it up, but it's full to about here and it just smells gross and I can smell it now, so I don't, I don't even want to use that. <laughs> just to say, I've actually opened this and smelt this one for the first time. Oh, it smells yummy. Um, 
that's for maybe later on. I don't know if I'm going to need that. Some bio oil also from later on. Um, I got that for the stub of my eyebrow, but I didn't really put it on with, I don't think. And lots of rehydrate solutions. Um, i just been kind of warned that, you know, morning sickness might be awful. I need to make sure that I keep my hydration up, especially being uh, in such a warm environment at this time of year. This is the, how do you say it? Quartrum. So this is the medication I need to take if one of these tests uh, positive for malaria I think you have to take like the whole lot I think they're quite massive as well so a little instruction here on the back yeah it's a lot <laughs> um, but obviously a lot better than actually having malaria for an extended time um, obviously very dangerous and especially if you're carrying a baby so, um, yeah that's all I don't know if you can hear the buzzing, but there's tons of bees um, up there in the trees because they're flowering. Kind of hearing them most mornings. Um, the water buck and bush buck just kind of went in that direction. And the sun is nearly setting. The elephants are in now. And Theo should be back over this side soon. Okay, bye bye.